What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, that's Curious. Uh, who's been playing Need for Speed Payback? Ah, uh, like I got it with the PlayStation Play. It's so good. I like it. It's real fun. Uh, Zach in today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here late. All right, this story's called, Am I Wearing an Orange Apron? First post, yay me! I am a disabled, overweight, and scarily gorgeous looking woman. She said ugly, but that's not nice. I am into wood art and generally doing DIY at my home in Scotland. I am also a British Army veteran. Due to a back injury I sustained in the military, I can't walk more than a few meters. So I get around on a mobility scooter, complete with Armed Forces veteran stickers on it, front and back. I'm proud to have served. Good. My local-ish big box DIY store famously wears orange. I also believe the company is owned by the same folk that own a US big box store that famously wears orange. I go fairly often, often enough that I know where many things are. Dressed in jeans, a floral print top, and slip-on shoes. No orange anywhere. I was down the electrical supplies aisle looking for just the right light switches and sockets for the remodel I'm doing in my long hallway at home. I pick one up every now and then to match with the color swatch I brought with me to see how they look. Most of them I put directly back on the hook I picked it out from, and others go in the basket on the footlate of my scooter. Also in the aisle is an old man. I'd say probably in his 80s. He's looking at the shelves, but seemingly rather confused. Being nice, I ask him if he's okay. That's mistake number one. He tells me he's looking for an adapter so he can plug in his electric toothbrush to charge. I know exactly what he needs and show him exactly where they are. Mistake number two. He smiles and gives me a grateful thank you and off he goes happily with his adapter in hand to the tills. I feel good. I've helped someone out. So I go back to my own shopping or at least I try to. Excuse me. I turn to see a young man with a handful of different switches. Which one of these should I use for an internal switch for an external light? I look as if I'm feeling chuffed with being able to help. Mistake number three. I point to one that has a light on so you can see when the switch is on. I probably use that one so you know if the light is on or off if you can't see the light itself. He smiles happily, dumps all the other switches on a shelf, and starts looking at other items on the shelves. So I go back to my own shopping, or at least I try to. Again, enter Karen. Where do I find that stuff to put on walls to fix a hole? It's down the other end of the store, or somewhere near the painting supplies, somewhere near the tills. Yes, but where? In which shelf? Not sure. Just take a look down there. A member of staff might be able to help better. I need you to show me. Sorry, just look down there. I'm about to pay for my shopping. But you need to show me. I don't know the right stuff. Look down there. There's a big banner by the right aisle. There may be someone there who works here. But you work here. It's your job to help customers. Show me where it is and what I need. I'm getting annoyed now. It's not my job. I don't work here. Am I wearing an orange apron? Ask someone wearing an orange apron. They'll help you. I start trying to roll my scooter forwards toward the tills. Karen, faster than a speeding bullet, steps directly in my path only an inch or two in front of me. Now, these scooters are heavy and solid and won't take damage from hitting an ankle. There was absolutely nothing I could do to stop quickly enough. Karen shrieks. You hit my leg! You tried to run me down! Oh! And the tears flow. Her shriek alerted a couple of staff members who come running. She ran me down! I want the manager! I want the police! I want an ambulance! I want her fired and arrested! Then a mature looking man in a suit with a large orange badge with his name and the word manager on it comes running up, also alerted by the shriek and shriek. Out. He asks what happened. Your assistant in the lazy cripple chair. Yes, really. Tried to kill me. I want her arrested and fired. Then I'll sue the store for my injuries. What assistant? This lady doesn't work here. She does, and she tried to run me down. My ankle is probably broken. No, she's still standing, stomping around, shouting, and generally not behaving like someone with a broken ankle. Maybe a spoiled toddler, though. She asked where something was. I told her where to look. She got demanding and behaved like a spoiled child and then deliberately stepped in front of me when I went to leave. No way 
I could stop in time. Liar! You do what, kid? I saw you helping to other people! Him? Pointing at the young man who stopped to watch the commotion. Yes, I helped. Out of the goodness of my heart because I'm a nice person. That doesn't mean I work here. Yeah, she was nice enough to help me. I asked her because I saw her helping out an old bloke. I knew she didn't work here. Yeah, she doesn't. Let's go back to your office to talk about this. Then we'll see what needs doing. And you'll call the police and an ambulance and fire her. Shaking my head. So off we go to the office. Karen remembers her broken ankle and starts putting on a deliberate limp on the wrong leg, moaning all the way to the office about her broken ankle. In the office, the manager invites Karen to sit. I'm barely in the office as my scooter doesn't have the turning circle to get further in. I start with a CCTV and see what happens. He turns the CCTV monitor around so we can all see it. He presses some buttons and runs the video back to where I ride into the aisle. I'm seen looking at products. I'm seen talking to the old man. I'm seen taking him to a shelf and passing an adapter to him. I'm seen talking to the young man and pointing at a product in his hands. I'm seen talking to the Karen, pointing down the store. She is seen looking angry, with fists clenched talking at me. I'm seen moving off. She is seen rushing past me and deliberately stepping in my path where I obviously don't have time to stop. Just so you know, I'm a retired police officer. Do you really want the police in an ambulance? Your ankle is clearly not broken and it's clear what really happened. Do you really want to get charged for wasting police time? They do that these days as police are short of manpower and won't thank you for calling them for what is clearly your own fault. They may even charge you with a hate crime with what I and my staff heard. Or we just leave the store and not come back. But really? Karen wilted. She stands and with no sign of a limp, walks out with a member of staff escorting her meekly out. I was thanked for my patience and handed a gift card. For your trouble. And so you're not put off using store name. I paid for my wares using the gift card, which covered the whole cost, plus some more credit remaining on my card for next visit. I may not help anyone else next time, though. Wow, 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 the entitled behavior that these Karens are demonstrating all over the world. No one is safe. Not the Scots, nor anyone else with any other name. <laughs> Get it? This story's called, They Still Haven't Figured It Out. I worked in bars and restaurants for years. During that time, I developed too many pet peeves to count and left the industry with a huge chip on my shoulder and enough trauma that I still have server nightmares years later. I miss liking humans. This is the story of how I served a table very, very badly because they were stupid and crappy and because I didn't work there. Despite no longer working as a server, I guess I still look like one. I went through a phase where I only owned one pair of black Converse, two pairs of black jeans, and seven black t-shirts. I called it my Batman wardrobe. It made getting dressed in the morning very easy, but it made walking through a restaurant very difficult. With this outfit in mind, I will absolutely concede that in some restaurant settings, I might have been bringing this on myself. But as common as this outfit is among service staff, it certainly isn't what most servers in most restaurants wear. It's also a very normal outfit to see on the street. Most of the time, if I'm just trying to walk to the bathroom and someone at a table tries to order from me, I'll just quickly let them know I don't work there. But one time, I'm tempted to try and justify this by outlining for you the laundry list of crappy behaviors I had already witnessed from this table. In the interest of saving time, I'll just assure you that this table of six absolutely knew who their server was and had absolutely been treating her poorly. They were one of those groups where the first guy orders his beer, and by the time the other five finally tell the server their orders, the first guy is already complaining that his beer is taking too long, when the server hasn't even left the table side. Yeah, this actually happens. A lot. While returning to my table from the bathroom, one of these winners stops me with a, hey, uh, get me a crappy beer because I'm an amateur with bad taste. I give him a cheerful, sure, and proceed toward my table. Quickly, his repulsive girlfriend pipes up with a whiny, and I want another one of this, gesturing towards some pink sludge in a cup because of course, that's her taste in beverages. I decide to stick around and let the whole table place orders with me before returning to my table and wait for them to notice me sitting there with my friends. I really didn't think this would go on long. I'm seated in plain sight about two tables away. They don't notice. Their server is table side again within moments and they're round is promptly ordered again since they're definitely the type to double order items from different staff. So my prank goes unnoticed. Later, I go to visit the bartender, have a brief chat, and grab a couple of drinks. I'm walking back to
to my table with two beers in hand. Is that mine? A voice asks as a hand reaches out to snatch it. Nope. I reply and carry on. My actions had the potential to make life harder for the staff, and I'd feel bad about it if I wasn't friends with all of them and if they hadn't been in on it. This table is so badly behaved and have been determined to have a bad time since before they arrived. They're really a lost cause. Any attempt to clear things up for them wouldn't be worth missing out on the entertainment of messing with them. So I start looking for excuses to innocently walk past their table. I take a few more bathroom visits than I really need and go visit my friend at the bar a couple of more times. I never initiate contact with these clowns, but if they take the bait, I'll take the order. They are becoming increasingly agitated and abusive with each encounter. They tell me how bad I am at my job and I just cheerfully correct them. No, I'm actually really good at my job. They are more infuriated at how unfazed I am at the abuse than at the several drink orders I failed to bring them. Remember, my friends and I have been seated in plain sight a few feet away, drinking and laughing it up all night. Anyhow, they drink three rounds despite having ordered about nine and decide to leave. Naturally, when their bill arrives, they try to contest it, arguing that we didn't actually get most of the drinks we ordered, so it shouldn't be on a bill. The manager informs them that the bill represents only the drinks they did receive. They try to argue the point, and I just can't stand to watch my prank escalate too far, so I pipe up. Your bill represents the drinks you ordered from your server. I don't even have to say it that loudly since I am seated so close to them. They all turn to look at me, and I want to say they realize what's going on, but that's giving them too much credit, since one of them immediately lays in with threats to call my boss. I offer them my boss's number and dare him to try and get a jeweler to fire their assistant for being bad at table service. He then tries to accuse me of putting items on his bill that shouldn't be there. You know, with the access card I used to log into the POS at the restaurants where I am a customer. He still hasn't figured it out. Edit, don't worry, those people wouldn't have tipped well anyway, and my table more than made up for it. Hey oh, <laughs> that's a really nice prank. I like it. I gl I'm glad that they played uh, played along with it. Uh, I love, I love messing with angry, stupid people. All right, this story's called A Wholesome I Don't Work Here Story. If you want to have a little break from the crazy people getting uncontrollably mad at your average, average, <laughs> uh, average Joe, I offer you a nice short story that happened to me a few days back. I was grocery shopping after work, wearing black skinny jeans with gray and blue hoodie and a dark blue mask. The sto this store's employees are wearing the same type of jeans, but with a red vest. I was taking a bottle of mayo off the shelf when I heard a gentle tap on my back. I put my earbuds on transparency by reflex and turned to see a small woman in her 60s or 70s, and I immediately heave a mental sigh of relief to see that she wears her mask correctly. It's one of my pet peeves. The old woman says in a sweet voice, and I'm gonna paraphrase because this conversation happened in my mother tongue. Excuse me, Sonny. Uh, can you please get me that? She points at a bottle of barbecue sauce on the top shelf. I say a polite sure while taking it off and putting it in her shopping basket. And I was just about to go back to my music when I hear another, I'm sorry. Can you please help me a little bit more? It'll take a minute of your time. I smile and agree. Then I offer to carry her quite heavy basket. As soon as we get all of her missing items, none of them were in her reach. I lend her basket to her, and when she takes it, she puts a bill in my hands, equivalent to $3. Keep in mind that my country didn't go through decades of inflation, so it's worth more. I say as soon as I recognize what's happening. Oh, this is really unnecessary. I was happy to help. She says, nonsense, Sonny. You were really nice and helped me out. I can tell you take a job seriously. It took me a few seconds to realize that she thought I was working there, so I tell her that I wasn't. This is her turn to take a few seconds to process what I said, then she gets visibly embarrassed. She mumbles, and why didn't you tell me? I say, well, you didn't ask. We both laugh, and she says, well, now you especially deserve that money. Then we exchange goodbyes, and I go get the rest of my things, but this encounter left me smiling till the rest of the day. That is so sweet. Very kind of you to go out of your way to help someone out like that. Very appreciated. By her and me, and all of you in the audience. I say as I gesture toward my closet wall. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.